evening, everyone. Welcome to our Thursday night Bible study. Tonight we are in Zechariah chapter 7. That's Zechariah chapter 7. Before we get started, is there anyone that has any prayer requests before we get started? I'm just going to ask y'all to continue to pray for uh, the Williams family. Uh, Brother Mike was a uh, Bible study on yesterday. He did mention a little bit of good news, a uh, little McKinney. Hill actually, uh, you know, moved his head a little bit on his own. So that's uh, some progress. And so just keep the prayers coming. And we just thank God for every little progression that we we get from time to time. Thank you. Most definitely. Thank you for the report. Do we have anyone else that has any prayer requests before we get started? Hey, Brother Green, Brother Lewis. Yes, sir. Yeah, man, prayer for uh, me. I'm down, down a little bit sick with the, with the COVID. So. Oh, wow. pray. Yeah, pray that like, uh, uh, recover soon and uh, pray for my family they, uh, that they don't get sick. Most definitely, my brother. We sure Thanks. will. We have anyone else that has any prayer requests before we get started? Yeah. All right, if not, Brother Javier, are you able to open us up with a word of prayer? Brother Javier? that we have again to study your word. We are most grateful for the life and strength you've given to us. We appreciate you for everyone present here this time to study your word, Father. Say me your name, be highly exalted. Father in heaven, we commit our study tonight into your hands that may you help us as we shall be uh, studying your word. Be with us that we would study our rights and uh, as many as those who would be participating by contributing father we pray may you help to direct them that they would speak nothing but your own word we have at this time prayer request uh brother lewis has just um tendered a request that he's sick with covid father and we pray that may you please lay your healing hands upon him and grant him quick recovery father and do not allow uh, the sickness to spread to the other family members father we pray that may you continue to protect him and guide him and keep him strong i help him that with medications will be using father they will be working uh, perfectly to uh, care for whatever is wrong with his system father we also pray father committing a brother uh, who has just been uh, or the family of the Mikhail that just been mentioned, Father. Thank you for everything that has been done in the life of the family. You know the problems that they've been facing, Father. We pray that may you please uh, continue to let have your way in the lives of the family. Father, we pray that may you continue to strengthen them. Whatever the problem is, may you solve it for them. Continue to strengthen us as we strive to worship you, as we strive to run this heavenly race be with our brother henry stevenson as he continues to shepherd the flock of god in this congregation as many as those who are also uh, preaching the word of god we pray that may you continue to strengthen them bless and abide with us and be with us till we uh, go through this study tonight forgive us father in any area we might have sinned against you and grant unto us our heart desires we have humbly prayed in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you for that prayer, Brother Leslie. Once again, everyone, we're in Zechariah chapter 7. And with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Brother Stevenson. Amen. 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 Amen.
Yeah, thank you, brothers and sisters, for uh, being a part of this study on tonight. And again, if you're not speaking, I ask you to mute your mics and also just like to let everyone know that these uh, these uh, studies are being recorded, okay? Uh, we're in Zechariah chapter 7. Uh, we are at the part of our study where, you know, God, uh, through the prophet Zechariah, will ask Israel uh, a, a few questions, you know, about their worship pattern. You know, in our text that we're going to read tonight, the people of God, uh, it's been two years and one month since uh, Zechariah had the eight visions. Uh, we're going two years and a year, uh, and rather uh, two years and and then one month down the road from the eight, eight visions that Zechariah actually got back in Zechariah 1.1. Uh, we're going to a part of our study where, you know, the people... Uh, God's people are going to go to the temple that, that they were supposed to be building, and they're going to inquire uh, of the priests about some things they want to know of God on how they should conduct themselves now that they are back from exile, okay? And so I just want to make sure we know where we are. And, for, and so we read the first three verses of Zechariah 7. He says, And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Darius that the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah in the fourth day of the ninth month, even in Cheslu, when they had sent under the house of God, Sherezer, Regalamech, and their men to pray before the Lord and to speak unto the priests, which were in the house of the Lord of hosts and to the prophet saying, should I weep in the fifth month, separating myself as I've done the these so many years, okay? So I want to stop there again just to make sure we all understand what's going on. Uh, uh, Zechariah uh, is getting a message from God, and he's getting this message from God at a time, as I mentioned, that the people are sending these men, as you see in verse number two, Sherezer and Regalimelech, uh, to pray before the Lord, and these men are going to speak to the priest. And what they're going to be doing is they're going to be asking the priest a question. And the question they're asking the priest is, in verse 3, should I weep in the fifth month, separating myself as I've done these many years? Now, it's important that we understand the question that they're asking. Uh, they're asking a question because when they were in Babylon uh, captivity, now again, they're back home, but while they were there, what they were remembering, and they were having fast days where they remember the actual day where uh, Nebuchadnezzar came in and actually destroyed the temple, okay? That was a day when they got into the land of captivity that they remembered that. And so every year around this time, the fifth month, they would remember that day and they would fast, okay? They would mourn for that. Matter of fact, go to Jeremiah 52. We'll just study this and just walk you through this. Go back to Jeremiah chapter 52. And you will look here at verse 12. It's going to tell you that it was the fifth day of the month when uh, Nebuchadnezzar came in and wiped uh, Jerusalem clean and brought them into Babylonian captivity. Uh, in Jeremiah 52, and Brother uh, Coffee, you have your Bible there, my brother? I'm going to just get you to read that one verse. And I'm going to get you all to do some, uh, get uh, some of you to help me read on tonight as we study this together. So Jeremiah 52 and verse 12. Read that, Brother Coffee, when you get it, please. Uh, the Bible reads, And now in the fifth month and in the tenth day of the month, which was 19 years of Nebuchadnezzar, uh, king of Babylon, and Nebuchadnezzarian, uh, the captain, thank you, of the guard which served the king of Babylon into Jerusalem. Okay, and I'm going to read verse 13. He burned the house of the Lord and the king's house and all the houses of Jerusalem and all the houses of the great men burned he with fire. And so you look at verse 12, he did that in the fifth month, okay, in the fifth month, okay? And so in the fifth month is when he did that. And so this was the month that they always remembered when they got into Babylon, they remember this act of Nebuchadnezzar destroying the room. They would fast and they would mourn for this day. So now they're back home. They're rebuilding the temple. And so now they're going into the into the, into the the temple uh, where the priests are to pray. And they want to inquire of God, should we fast like we did in Babylon 
those many days. Okay, so that's what we see in the first three verses. Matter of fact, before I go further past this, go to, I'm going to step ahead and go to Zechariah chapter 8. There were several days, actually, that they remembered, you know, uh, about this destruction and them being brought into captivity. Uh, go to Zechariah 8 and look with me in verse 18 uh, and 19. Look what these say. Brother Green, can you read chapter 8 of Zechariah 18 and 19? Because, again, it's going to show some other fast days that the children of Israel implemented on their own uh, when they got into Babylon. Again, these were just days they played, they put into place. Zechariah 8, 18 and 19. Read that, Brother Green. Yes, sir. Verse number 18. And the word of the Lord of hosts came unto me, saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth month, and the fast of the fifth, and the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth, shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful feast. Therefore, love the truth and peace. Okay, thank you, brother. Now, really what I've done is I've just went ahead, because God is going to give them hope in chapter 8. But right now, because uh, these are days that they were remembering, which were sad days about events that happened that brought them into captivity, okay? And so God is letting them know eventually those days are going to be days of hope, okay? Joy and gladness. Because, again, God is giving, sending the prophets to give them hope if they would just say, they repent of their sins and do the right thing. Okay, and so we'll go back to Zechariah 7. So they're asking the priest these questions, and now the Lord is going to answer, okay? God is going to answer them of their question. Uh, brother, no, uh, he's not feeling good. Let me see if I can get... Uh, Brother Coach V, can I get you to read 4 through 7? Are you in a position to read? Okay, I'll tell you what. Since I want you, if you're in a position to read, just put your hand up. I'm going to read 4 through 7. Let me go ahead and do this. I don't want to, uh, and thank you, Brother Jerry. Now I'll get you to read the next reading. And so in, in, in Zechariah chapter 7, verse 4, here's God's answer. Then came the word of the Lord of hosts unto me, saying, Speak unto all the people of the land, and to the priests, saying, when you fast and mourn in the fifth and the seventh month, even those seventy years, did you at all fast unto me, even unto me? And when you did eat and when you did drink, did you did not you eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? Should you not hear the word words which the Lord had cried by the former prophets when Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity and in the seas thereof round about her when men inhabited the south and the plain. So here's God's answer to them. They were fasting. That's exactly what they were doing. But what God is saying, in your fasting over there, you were doing it. I want you to get this for selfish motives. You were over there fasting and you were grieving about what happened to Jerusalem and why, why you were brought into captivity. But your fast thing over there wasn't for the purpose of changing you. It was for selfish reason. Because once they're back, notice what happened. Their lives are not changed. Their lives are not changed. You're doing the same exact thing. And brothers and sisters, let me say this. Remember, the Old Testament is for our learning. We're not just studying these books of the Bible just to get academic knowledge. We study these books to see what kind of applications that we can make uh, to our lives. To write out the wrongs, to do some things perhaps that they've done wrong, make sure that we don't do. And so when they were in captivity, they, they, they fasted, they had these morning days, but God was looking that the reason they were fasting, the reason they were mourning was for selfish reasons, and it wasn't to glorify God. See, God has a problem with you and I going through the motions, brothers and sisters, going through the, 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 the mechanics of worship and, and, and our heart not being involved. And it's not changing our, our lives. And so they ask, should we weep like we did in the fifth month? God tells Zechariah, what I want you to do is I want you to tell them, when you did eat, in verse 6, when you did drink, did you not eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves. What are you saying, God? You weren't doing it to glorify me. You were not doing it to glorify me. Saints, I, I, I can't stress this enough. God saved us. If you're on here and you're a Christian, he saved us to change us. 
that we might be zealous for good works. That's what he that's what he saved us for. Not to continue to go down roads of sin, uh, not to, to worship him and, and come to church when it's convenient for us, uh, not to be coming to worship and you're still not treating your brothers and your sisters right. And so he said, your fast days, your eating and drinking, you weren't doing it because you were concerned about me and my judgments. You were concerned about you and what you were going through. You were crying out because of what you are facing and the punishment that's coming on you. Now, this is not a, 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 a something that's foreign, brothers and sisters, to the New Testament scriptures. Matter of fact, go to 1 Corinthians 11. I want you to go there. This is some scriptures that we quote just about, for the most part, every Lord's Day when we take of the Lord's Supper. The church in Corinth had a whole lot of problems. And uh, their problem was a bunch of division, not getting along, not treating each other right, uh, and, and yet coming into worship and somehow uh, believing that taking the Lord's Supper and coming to worship camouflages how you act outside of worship. And this is exactly what they're doing here in Zacharias' day. They're coming, they're inquiring, the priest, should we fast like we did when we were over in Babylon, we're back, and God sees your heart. He says, you know, when you're fasting over there, it wasn't about me, it was about yourselves. But worship is designed to change you and I. That's what it's designed. When you and I come to worship, we come to worship to glorify God and to examine ourselves and to see if there is anything in that's keeping us from glorifying God. Coming to worship does not camouflage how you and I act and how we treat one another outside the walls of worship. And so this is what was going on in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Look at verse 17. We read it all the time, but notice verse 17. 1 Corinthians 11, 17. Paul says, now in this, now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that you come together not for the better, but for the worse. And that's something, you're coming to worship, but it's not for the better. Worship is making you worse. That's a shame. So he says, for first of all, he's going to explain why. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. He says, for there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, he said, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone take it before other in his own supper, and one is hungry, and another, he says here, is drunken. He says, what, have you not housing to eat and to drink in, or despise you the church of God? And shame them that have not. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? Paul says, I praise you not. So what were they doing? Well, when they were coming together in their feast, they were coming together in their feast for selfish reasons. Just like they are, uh, God is talking about their spirit and their attitude here in Zechariah chapter 7 and verse 6. When you did eat, when you did drink, did you not eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? Worship is designed for us to focus on God glorifying God, to work on getting sin out of our lives. And that means if my relationship is right with God, it'll be shown in how I treat my fellow man. There's no getting around that, brothers and sisters. Worship does not camouflage our sins, our actions outside of, outside of the worship. And so God just simply saying, keep your worship. Keep your worship. And that's been a theme throughout the prophets that we find in the Bible. Remember when we studied Amos? Go back to Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5. We, we're doing God no favors, brothers and sisters. Uh, just coming to church, not treating your husband right, your wife right, your children right, you know, not, not, not doing right on your job. We're doing God no favor. We've got sin in our lives. We're not repenting of. God sees all of that. He sees everything you and I do. Just like he saw everything they were doing. Amos chapter 5. Look with me in verse number 21. Amos 5, 21. The Bible says that we studied this book already, but I want to read it again. God says, I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assembly. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offering of your fat beasts. Take you away from me the noise of your songs, for I will not hear the melody of your vows. But let judgment run down as water and righteousness as a mighty stream. Have you offered unto me sacrifice and offering in the wilderness 40 years, O house of Israel? But you have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Shion, your images, the star of your God, which you made to yourself. Notice what they made it to, to yourselves. 
Therefore will I cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus, said the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. So what are you saying, God? You can't have one foot in the church and one foot in the world and think God's going to accept you. You cannot be lukewarm. That's what he's saying. You cannot be lukewarm. And this is where they were in Zechariah's day. You know, that their coming to church and worship was not to glorify God. Saints, let me say this. You know, one thing we know in the church is God, we don't worship him with instrumental music. He does not want us to worship with instruments of music. But let me tell you what else he doesn't want. He don't want our me mechanical instruments of our bodies either. In other words, coming to worship and just going through the motions. We're there, but we're not there in faith. And so when you and I take the Lord's Supper, you know, we have to remember that, hey, we're one bread. You know, it, it, uh, I need to be concerned about my brothers and, and sisters. Uh, I need to make sure that I haven't done anything to offend, uh, to offend them. That I... I fix whatever sins that I've got wrong in my life. Otherwise, my worship is not acceptable. God says keep it, okay? And so going back to Zechariah chapter 6, in verse 7, I'll read it again. He says, Should you not hear the words which were cried by the former prophets, when Jerusalem was inhabited in prosperity, and the cities are around about her, when men inhabited the south, uh, he says, and, and the plain." You know, what God wants, brothers and sisters, is contrite hearts and spirits. That's what he wants. You know, God wants a heart that is bent toward him. A heart of people who, when they do mess up and they have messed up, that they would get it right. People who have a heart of, of compassion. That's what he wants. Okay? So look at verse 8 through 10. Brother Jared, can I get you to read 8 through 10? I'll open this up for questions in a minute. 8 through 10 for us, Brother Jerry. He's going to show yes. us here what, God, what else God wants. And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Does the speak the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment and show mercy and compassion every man to his brother. And oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. And let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. You see that? You see what God's concerned about? How you treat your brother. Compassion. You know, it, it's, it's, it's what Micah said back in Micah chapter 6. I want you to go there with me. Micah chapter 6. And I want us to read 6 to 8. Micah chapter 6. Right after Amos. We went to Amos. Go to Micah chapter 6. Six to eight. Uh, who had their hand up? Who can read for me? There were some hands. They all went down. I, well, I want you to keep them up for me. Go ahead, Brother Adams. Can you read Micah 6, 6 to 8 for me, my brother? I want you to listen what God wants. And this doesn't change just because we're in the New Testament. Jesus is going to reiterate this in the in the Gospels when he comes on the scene. Micah 6, 6 to 8. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Amen. Thank you, brother, for that read. You'll see that? This, this, let me say the saints. This is the only worship that will be acceptable to God. If you and I are coming to worship and this is in our heart and our spirit, our worship is not going to be acceptable to God. You got you again, worship does not camouflage what you and I, the sins that you and I may try to hide from man. And understand, we never hide from God. It doesn't do it. God expects your heart to be right. If there's a problem with fellow man. you got some sin in your heart. God wants you to fix it before you come to worship. Matthew chapter 5, 21. Matthew 5, 21. Matthew 5, 21. And I get another read. I want you to read 21. This is the Sermon on the Mount through 24 for us. Matthew 5, 
21 through verse 24. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew 5, 21 through 24. He's going to pick us like as if he picks up the baton from Micah and, and he, he illustrates on his Sermon on the Mount the same attitude that those who be in the kingdom that we must display. Matthew 5, 21 through 24. Who has that? Who has their hand up? Thank you, Brother Adam, for your read. Who can read for us? Me, I'll read, Brother. Please, thank you. Go ahead. Ye have heard that it had them of old time, thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Rakai, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. All right, now do y'all see that, what he's saying here? Now, now, I'm gonna show you how powerful this verse is. Now, I want you to look at verse 23 again, because maybe, maybe we can miss this and maybe we don't. Verse 23 of Matthew 5 says, Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and you remember that your brother had all against you. Now, this is different than what we read where you go to your brother and rebuke him for the sin. Now, notice what he says here. Your brother has something against you. Doesn't say you got something against him. He says, you leave your gift and you do your part to go fix it. You do what you can to fix the remedy and then you come to worship. So you necessarily don't have anything against them. But you remember, but, but hey, they got something against me. Or maybe there's something you did do and you're aware of. The idea is you have to search your heart, examine yourself, and be making efforts to fix it before you come to worship. Why? Why is that again? Because worship doesn't camouflage, doesn't camouflage sin. It doesn't camouflage unrepentant sin. It doesn't camouflage division. It doesn't camouflage it. Quoting scriptures doesn't do it. Just reading the Bible doesn't do it. Getting on Zoom programs doesn't do it. What God wants, he wants you and I to fix it. He wants us to do what we can to fix the remedy. The idea, remember, the word compassion. You know, this is what, we, a lot of times when we hear the word compassion, you know, excuse me, wrestling with these glasses, when we talk about the word compassion, we often think it's just, well, we have compassion on somebody who's sick or somebody who's at a funeral. You know, it's more than that. Have compassion on them. No, compassion is we are to have compassion on those who may not be as strong as we are, uh, who, who may be dealing with sins and struggling with things, and you can't have that attitude. Well, I never do what they do. And so you beat them down. See, compassion, he's talking about Christians need to have this mentality not to shoot first and then ask questions. See, that's what we like to do. We shoot first and then we ask the question. He says, no, this is not how this works. You and I ought to have compassion toward our brothers and sisters. Some of us think compassion is, well, you know, I didn't say anything about what they're doing doing. I didn't say anything. I kept my mouth closed. Let me tell you, it goes further than that. Because the Bible says love thinks no evil. So it's not even necessarily what you just say. Well, I didn't or didn't say. You could not have said nothing and still be thinking evil about your brother and sister, which is what love doesn't do when you read 1 Corinthians 13. And God says you need to fix them. Okay? And so we need to make sure that we don't have this mentality to not be compassionate, you know, toward those who may be struggling in some areas. Our job is to try to help brethren to mature in the faith. That's what we do. Again, I'm not saying we don't rebuke people. That's wrong. We not. We still call out sin. That's what love does. Yeah, you do rebuke people. You do call out sin and, and tell people they need to repent of the sin. But you make sure when you're doing it that you're doing it with compassion and that you have some mercy behind it as well, okay?
right. All right. So let's go back to Zechariah. We're going to wrap this thing up. And so you go back to Zechariah. See, saints, worship is a time where we judge ourselves. See, they're coming to God and saying, should we keep the fast like we did when we were over in, in Babylon? There's should we continue to do that? God says, uh, it was all about yourself when you were doing that. It really wasn't about you glorifying God because you're back in the land right now and you're still not glorifying God. So it's still, it was all about you and not about me. And God sees that and God's addressing it. So we look in verse number 11 through 14. We've got to get a reader for 11 through 14. Brother Andrew, are you able to read, my brother? Uh, Zechariah yeah. chapter 7. Read verse 11 through 14 for us. Uh, yes, sir. Um, King James Version, right? 11 through 14. Yes, but they sir. refused to hearken and pull away the shoulder and stop, <clears throat> excuse me, and stop their ears that they should not hear. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent in his spirit by the former prophets therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts you said the 14 yes read the rest yes sir the rest okay. the yes sir therefore it has come to pass that as he cried and they would not hear so they cried and I would not hear said the Lord of hosts but I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations whom they knew not. Thus the land was desolate after them, that no man passed through nor returned, for they laid the pleasant land desolate. Amen. Thank you, my brother. And so God, in, in a sense, gives them a, a history lesson. I want you to look, he, he basically tells them, I want you to look back to your fathers that was in the land you know, before he sent Nebuchadnezzar to destroy. See, when God sends a prophet, brothers and sisters, and send a messenger, he sends them because he's still trying to give you hope. You and I hope. When people are telling you, well, hey, brother, sister, you shouldn't do that. This is what the Bible says. You know, when we're, you're reading the scriptures to your brother and your sister who may be uh, walking contrary to the doctrine. What you and I are doing is we're giving them a message of hope uh, so that they might fix it, so that they might not have to experience the wrath of God uh, whenever God sends his son, back, Jesus, back to judge the earth. And so God shows, hey, when I sent the prophets before they went into uh, captivity, what they were doing in verse 11, they refused to listen. And notice that they pulled away the shoulder. Isn't that what people do? I don't care what you say. I don't care what the preachers say. I don't care what the elders say. I don't have to come to church. Uh, the Bible will say I got to come Sunday night and Wednesday. Yeah, there's people that do that. And they'll be the same ones that God will spank them. I'll send them through some trials and some tribulations in their life. Because God, at the end of the day, God is still in control. God knows how to discipline every single one of us, brothers and sisters. He knows what every one of his children need. The hard-headed ones, he knows what it is. Just like you know your children, which one hard-headed and which one you need to put certain types of discipline on. Let me tell you something. We're not greater disciplinaries than God is. So those that shrug the shoulder at the leadership, shrug the shoulder at God's authority, I'm going to do what I want to do, how I want to do it. Well, God, God, God sees all that, and God will, he will deal with you. They stopped their ears, they didn't want to hear it, and that's what they did. They made their hearts as adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in the spirit by the form of prophet. Therefore, get this, came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts, verse 12. Brothers and sisters, understand, when you and I sow to the wind, expect to reap a whirlwind. Believe me, if you and I sow to the wind, we will reap a whirlwind. And, and, and if God didn't discipline us that way, then he wouldn't love us. He wouldn't, he wouldn't love us. And he's a loving God. So what are you saying, brothers and sisters? Worship, brothers and sisters, and this is what they're asking God about, should we keep the fast. What I want you to understand about worship, worship is a time to judge ourselves for God will. Now, I want you to go back to 1 Corinthians 11, something we might miss uh, when we when these are read on the first day of the week. Go back to 1 Corinthians 11. 
Now look at this. I want you to look here. Now remember, they had a bunch of problems in Corinth. Uh, not getting along, taking each other to court, preacher idols, uh, disrespect of authority. This is why Paul has to talk about the head of the man. Every man is Christ. The head of the woman is a man. And he has to deal with it. all these issues. Because they were out of control, abusing the uh, the spiritual gifts, they were not unified, and so somehow when they got to the Lord's Supper, they wouldn't examine themselves. They would think, "Well, we're all right with God. We'll we'll take of the communion, the bread, and the cup, and God will accept this spiritual act of worship." And, and God is saying, mm -mm, "No, sir, no, sir. You need to, that's why you need to judge yourself before you eat it." Now look in verse number twenty six. I'm on 1 Corinthians 11, 26. He says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do to show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Look at verse 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. But for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak. Now, again, it's a spiritual spiritual weakness. Sick among you, spiritual sick, and many sleep. Spiritually dead. Spiritually dead. For, now, look at verse 31. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. You see what I'm saying? So if you go ahead and examine yourself, leave your gift at the altar, fix your situation before you come to worship, then God don't have to send these judgments on you. He doesn't have, you don't have to, he doesn't have to send all this, this calamity on you. But when we are judged, notice what happened. When God's got to judge you, though, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. I told you God disciplines all his children, Hebrews 12. So if you and I think come in the world worship and we're not treating our brethren right, is a camouflage. God said, oh no, I, it's going deeper than what, what you're trying to shake and bake around these saints. I see your heart. I see that you haven't fixed this with your brother or your sister. I see that. And notice this saying, you know, we love using John 9. We love using John 9, 31 to tell the world God don't hear sinners prayer. You know, that applies to a Christian who's practicing sin, too. You know that, right? It, it applies to Christians that's practicing sin and then come into church and, and talk about, oh, Lord, holy is your name, and, and Lord, I love you, and, and singing, oh, how I love Jesus. God oh, don't hear your prayers either because he's wanting you and I to fix what we got wrong in our lives. Those who have having spouse problems, not fixing it with their husband. Husband's not fixing it or wife. Go to First Peter 3. First Peter 3, about to wrap up. Look what he said. I'm telling you, your prayers and my prayers are hindered when we don't treat each other right. My husband, wife, and this is all relationships. Better got to be getting it right. He says in verse 7, Likewise, you husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life. Why? that your prayers be not hindered. They don't stop there. Look at this. Look at your Christian conduct. Finally, be you all of one mind, having, here's our word, compassion on who? On one of another. As brethren, be pitiful. In other words, you know, show some mercy. Be some compassion. Be, be courteous. Not rendering evil for evil, railing for railing, but contrawise, blessing. Knowing that you are thereunto called, that you should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, notice this, let him refrain his tongue from evil. Watch what you say. And his lips that speak no God. You gotta watch what you say. You can't walk around church talking crazy about people every and just saying whatever you want to say. You can't do that, brother and sister. You can't do it. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Why? Look at this. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the Face of the Lord 
is against them that do evil. Worship is a time we come together to judge ourselves. That's what you should do. Examine yourself whether or not you are doing what you do because you love God. You know, there, are, there can be people come to church and... And I'm telling you, and you got them sitting in your pews, and I'm sure we do have in our pews that come to church yeah, for selfish reasons. Uh, it's not because they, they solely, truly love God. And God, God wants us to fix that. See, <laughs> you and I are not serving God. I'm going to say, and I said this to the congregation like we speak the other day. You're not serving God, or it's not proof even that you love God. Just because sometimes your will matches God. See, sometimes your will and God's will can match, you know, uh, and that don't mean you love God. It could be, okay, I'll be at church because there's not something better for me to do this Sunday. And so our wills match now. See, God, I'm at church, but I'm only at church because the Super Bowl ain't on. Yeah. And so our wills match, but that don't mean you love God. See, loving God and what God expects is, I want you to put me first because I put you and I, I put you on this earth for the purpose of glorifying me. And that's what God put us here for. And so, as I close, brothers and sisters, and this is a very powerful, uh, all God's word is powerful, but it's a very powerful study, Zechariah, uh, because it's showing us that, that God sees and our hearts cannot be adamant toward God. You know, we can't say... And Jesus says, why well, call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say. See, one thing, and I'm going to say this, I promise, I'm going to get off my high horse. But I, I, want us to, I want us to understand this. It's more, brothers and sisters, than coming on these Zoom studies. It's more than coming to your Bible class on Wednesday. It's more than coming to Bible study on Wednesday just to get academic knowledge, to know more about God, and God's not changing our lives. We all got something to work on. All of us. All of us, when we look in the mirror of God's word, and you know what it is you have to work on, if you be honest, I know what it is that I have to work on to be honest, but God wants you to be honest, and he wants you to be changing it. And so it's not just coming on these Zooms, getting all this information, knowing the five acts of worship, knowing that the church is right, and then we are not displaying the glory of God in our lives. See, it's, it's more than just knowing about Jesus. What Jesus says is, I want you to call me Lord. You know what that means? He, he didn't say, why call you me Jesus, Jesus, and do not the things that I say. That's not what he says. He said, why call you me Lord and do not the things that I say? Because when he's Lord, brothers and sisters, that means he calls the shots. That's what Lord means. I call the shots. I run the world. I am in charge. And that's why whenever the father sends his son back, the Bible says every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. They're not going to confess that, oh, he's Jesus, although he is. What they're going to confess is that he's Lord. And that is, he's always the one calling the shots. At the end of the day, he has all power and all authority. And so the question is, is your heart right with God, brothers and sisters? Is our hearts right with God? And their hearts was not right with God. They want to inquire the priest, uh, you know, should we keep the morning and the feast days? Uh, but it wasn't about God. It was about their own selfish reason. Let's not be selfish, saints. Let's get out of self and let's try to serve God and make our lives all about him. And uh, we do that, and then it'll be well with our soul. Thank you for your undivided attention. Again, thank you for allowing me to teach this study uh, tonight, Brother Udry. I'll turn it back over to the moderator. Thank you, my brother. Great teaching tonight. Um, wonderful lesson. I want, If you don't mind, I'd like to go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And verse number 31, and it was something that you said that really jumps out in that scripture um, where it says, for if we would judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. And I was thinking on that. And in that scripture, it, the thing that, that jumped out at me is honesty. You know, you have to, if you're going to judge yourself, you have to be honest with yourself. You have to be able to admit that I have this problem or I'm struggling with this or that or whatever the case may be. And that's what really jumped out at me when you read that scripture, that word just hit, just honesty. Because a lot of people, you know, they, they, they'll look at everybody else's ugly, but they won't look at their own. And in 
know, in order for you to get right with yourself, you know, you have to look at your ugly too. You just can't keep it. And it just goes back to what Jesus said about the speck in the plank. You know, how can you get the, the speck out of your brother's eye when you got a plank in yours? And I'm, I'm, I have something else I want to say. I'll hold it for now and I'll let Brother Coffee go ahead. Go ahead, Brother Coffee. Uh, uh, great lesson, Brother Henry. Um, I want to go back to Matthew chapter 5 and, and verse number uh, 23. Because when, you, when we read verse 23, what comes to mind is what is also written in, in Matthew chapter 18. It says, Therefore, if thou bring, bring thy gift to the altar, and there remember it's that thy brother has an art against thee. Then when you go to chapter 18, and then it goes at verse number 15, it's a different scenario, but then it says, but well, moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go tell, it, go tell him his fault between thee uh, and him alone. And if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. And I have to be honest with myself because I must have just sped read through chapter two, uh, verse number 23 and 5 because the word remembrance didn't come to mind as it was being taught tonight. And so when, you, when I look at chapter 5 and chapter 18, we actually have a responsibility on both sides because oftentimes, and now that it was said, mentioned tonight, Oftentimes, I'm just going to just wait till, okay, brother, and you, you know, okay, you got to come and, and, and deal with me with this. But no, if I remember that, that, that someone has a, an issue with me, then I have just as much a responsibility as if that brother, if, as if I sinned against him or he sinned against me, so they're both joined together. So there's no waiting around. And so I, I appreciate you um, slowing down well enough to, to emphasize that because I, I, I had it wrong. And so, um, um, God bless you, brother. You know, I appreciate I'm so, it. I'm so glad. Thank you, brother. Boy, you, you made the teaching worth, worth being taught tonight, brother. One person really grasped that they needed to grasp. And that's the idea, brothers. We're all, you know, and again, as much as lie, then you live peace with all men. Now, understand. Everybody in the church is not going to be genuine, brothers and sisters. Understand that. Everybody in the, and that's why Paul in 1 Corinthians 11, and I think the verses 19 said, for there must be heresies among you, uh, because it's going to show who's approved and not approved. You're always going to have the atrophies in the church. Make sure you understand. You're going to always have some people, perhaps with Jezebel spirits in the church. The weed and the tear are going to grow together. But here's the thing. You make sure you're not the one that's putting a millstone around the children's neck. And let God deal with them. You know, once you've done all that you can do with brothers and sisters, you make sure you have a heart of compassion. You've done all you can do. The rest is in God's hand. And God will. Now, I'm telling you, God, God is alive. And God will not allow his children to be vexed beyond, you know, beyond degree. You know, put on them more than they can handle without taking up, taking up where, where they leave off. You know, that's really the idea. You know, we give it to God. I've done all I can do, and now God is in your hand. Uh, perhaps with this devil or whoever is in the church. And so it's going to show who's approved. But understand, God's desire has always been, brothers and sisters, that we be one. Same mind, same judgment. My, my, our mission, our ministry, brothers, so let me say this, is a ministry of reconciliation. There's no, no room for racism, no room for arrogancy, no room for pride, uh, none of that in the kingdom. You know, I may have done wrong, but if you feel I've done wrong, I'm a, it's humility. I'll go. That's the idea. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. I don't, I don't feel I did anything wrong, but I'll go because it's what God asked me to do. And so once I've done my part, my worship is good. And God will God will be glorified in our actions. So remember, God doesn't, he, he hates discord, brothers and sisters. He, we talk about the things that God hates. And that list is he who sows discord among brethren. Make sure you don't miss that. He that sows discord among brethren, God will deal with those individuals. But we do our part in trying to uh, fulfill Jesus' prayer, and that is that we all might be one, that the world might believe that his Father sent him. Thank you for that, my brother. Is there anyone else that has any questions or comments concerning tonight's study? 
if there's no other questions or comments, I had something else I want to address too um, that I think that may link to, to tonight's study. In Philippians chapter 2, uh, Philippians chapter 2, verses uh, 12 and 13, uh, which reads, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to, to will and to do of his good pleasure. And the reason why I read that is because there was a thought that was going through my head earlier. And Brother Stevenson touched on it tonight in this lesson. Uh, we can't just be in the church. It, it's much more than just being in the church. We have to be an active part of the church. Just like when it comes to our salvation, just because, you know, we hear, believe, uh, repent, confess, and get baptized, okay, they puts us into the church or into salvation, but we also have to be an active part of our salvation. We just can't obey those things and just, just sit back and put it in cruise control. You know, and that's why Paul says, you know, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. In order to work something out, there's something you have to do. And to me, you know, you have to be an active part of it. Not just a part of it, but an active part on it. So I, that was just on my mind today, even before we got on the Zoom. And I was thinking about that. You know, we have to be an active part of not only the church, but as, as well as our salvation. And we just can't be in it. You know, we have to be an active part of it as well. Uh, I'll ask again, is there anyone that has any questions or comments, whether it's concerning tonight's lesson or anything else that you may have, even if it's not a part of tonight's lesson? Go ahead, Brother Coffey. Uh, Brother Henry, can you turn to uh, Philippians uh, 1? And actually, this is going to complement what uh, what Brother Green was was emphasizing, uh, starting at verse number five, um, when he's talking about being an active part of, of the fellowship or of the of the body, and it says for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, uh, being confident of this very thing that He which has begun a good work in you uh, will perform it until the day um, of Jesus Christ. Can you um, expound on that? Um, in, and that's in, verse number what, uh, bro? That's uh, verse uh, Philippians one, six, one six, five and six. Yes, yeah, sir. For yes. your fellowship in the God, and this is a uh, Paul prayer. You know, he's actually praying his prayer of thanksgiving for the saints in Philippi. I think I'll start with verse three. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of my, uh, for you, I'm making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. And so remember, the church in Philippi, Philippi actually. Uh, started back in Acts chapter 16. You see Acts 16. You see uh, uh, you see Lydia and, and, and their house, and, and they're there at the riverside. And Paul comes and and then uh, he talks to those women there. And and you know you have these this church, this congregation. They were just in fellowship from the time uh, that they heard the gospel. You know the these saints here. You know that had obeyed. You know they you know they they, they got busy. You know, they show Paul love. They, they beg Paul to stay, you know, and stay with them, you know, because they want to hear more of the gospel. And so Paul is just praying for the, their fellowship. And he's also confident, again, he's not there when he writes this letter. And so he said, being confident of this very thing, that he, he, which begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And again, we know we have the Spirit of God, and so we're not in this by ourselves. You know, if we are... Uh, willing to, you know, surrender all to God, be obedient uh, to his word. It's God that's working in us and with us uh, to fulfill his purpose, okay? And that's why we ought to pray for one another, you know, encourage one another. Our job in the body is to edify, to build up, not to tear down, okay? Our, our responsibility, all of our responsibility, not just the preacher, the, the elders, the deacons, and the Bible school teachers, all of our responsibility is to help mature the body, you know, to mature the, each other's faith. And, and with maturing the body, in time, there's growing pains. You just have to understand that. For the body to grow while we're here, there's growing pains. 
Uh, but we just understand we're not by ourselves. God is with us, and we are confident that God will supply everything that we need to fulfill his will. Thank you, brother. Is there anyone else that has any questions or comments, whether it's concerning tonight's study or anything else that you may have? All right, if not, I'll go ahead, Brother Javier. Yeah, I just wanted to mention uh, concerning uh, the strength level. You know, it's, sometimes we look at strength as only knowledge of the scriptures or what God has given us, but sometimes strength is also listed as what Brother Henry read in Matthew 5 concerning going to your brother to have a fall or if you made a pair. Uh, that's also takes strength to to confess your error, confess your sin. That's another part of the character of Christ, which is honesty, truthfulness, is to be strong enough to do that. So I also just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention as well. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that, Brother Javier. Do we have anyone else that has any questions, any com comments, whether it's concerning tonight's study or anything else? If there's no other questions or comments, I'd like to just remind everyone uh, Saturday, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on Brother Stevenson's Zoom page, we'll have our open forum. Once again, that's 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on Brother Stevenson's Zoom page. And I'm going to reiterate something that I said this past Tuesday. I just want everyone to know that this is all of our study, all of our study. If there's any questions, anything you have, please, please do not feel afraid or anything else to ask. There's no such thing as a dumb question. We're all here to learn. And it, it may be the very question that you ask or the very thing that you may say that may not just help you, but may help someone else too. So I'm encouraging all of you all, please, if you have anything, any questions, whether it's, it's on the subject or it's not on the subject, please feel free to um, raise your hand and, and ask that question because, you know, that it, it could be helpful to all of us or, or maybe just one of us, but it'll be helpful. So please feel free to, to raise your hands and ask any questions or make any comments you may have. And with that being said, um, before we close out, I'm going to ask, is there anyone that has any prayer requests before we close out? Yes, uh, please keep my family in prayer uh, for strength and for um, loved ones coming to Christ. Okay, I'm, I'm going to read this uh, prayer request that the brother just put in the chat. He said, please continue to pray for my son. My wife and I are meeting with him February 1st. Pray the spirit will guide uh, the converse, that conversation and his heart will be softened and he will uh, hear what God expects for his life, that he will repent and be reconciled to his wife Thanks, brethren. Appreciate y'all much. And that's from uh, Brother Adam. So uh, he's asking for prayers for his son. Uh, is there anyone else that has any prayer requests before we close out? Yes, yeah, continue to pray for my wife and, and our family as well and our kids. Thank you, brothers. Sisters. Most definitely, my brother. I'm also continue to ask you all to continue to pray for my wife and the situation with my sister-in-law and for myself as well, for, for strength, and and just continue to keep praying for us, brothers and sisters. Uh, is there anyone else? All right, if not, I'm going to ask Brother Javier, my brother, if you don't mind, could you please close us out with a word of prayer? Sure. What was Brother Hanger's request again, one more time? For him, his wife, and his children. My, my family and loved ones to come closer to the Lord. Amen. Let's, let's pray. I'll pray for my family as well. Uh, let us pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come at this time, Father, communicating with you, Father, uh, praying unto you, Father. We know that your son is a mediator, for Father. We pray that you will receive our requests, Father, and intervene in our lives. Thank you, Father, for the man's servant. 
Brother Henry, Father, for teaching your word, Father, rightly dividing your word, Father, and bringing out treasures, Father, from the old covenant and new, that we be able to learn, Father, and grow in Christ. Father, we pray at this time with Brother Henry, pray for himself, Father, pray for his wife and his family, Father, that they will draw near unto you, Father, that they will seek after you uh, with the whole heart, Father, we ask that you strengthen him and his family, Father, and guide him to know what your will is. While we pray for our brother, Father, Adam's uh, father, uh, the Adam's uh, family, Father, concerning the son, concerning the request of the softening of the heart, Father, as there's an attempt to have a meeting for February 1st. Pray that the heart be softened, Father, and concerning the reconciliation, Father, to his wife. Father, we ask that his heart will remember the vows that he's given father for marriage father that father all malice or any type of evil will be put aside father and hearts will be humble to for those two to seek after you father we ask that the communication and the conversation father be sound spiritual father and that there will be unity again father, we pray for our brother henry for himself father for his wife father pray father as well for his family ask that you be with them father guide them to make wise decisions concerning this world, concerning your word, Father, that they will, Father, stand in your grace, Father, stand in your mercy as well. We pray as well, Father, for Brother Green, Father, his wife, sister-in-law, Father, you know the case that's going on. Father, we ask that you will intervene and be with her, Father, be with them, Father, concerning the resolution that needs to be done. Father, we pray for my family, Father, that you comfort and strengthen them, Father, as you know that there is some seeds some seed, Father, that went out concerning your word. Father, we ask, Father, they will draw near unto you, get to know your will, Father, and your true salvation plan Father, that you set up for your son. Father, we ask that you will comfort those with discomfort as well because of the loss of a loved one, Father. We ask that you will strengthen, Father, those family members, Father, and guide them to know who you are, Father, that the fear will be a uh, sincere, Father, from the heart. Oh, we ask that you guide each and every one of us. You know our hearts, you know our needs as well. We ask that you give us what we stand in need of and strengthen us. Father, give us what we stand in need of to do your will continue. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for that wonderful prayer, Brother Javier. And again, everyone, don't forget about Saturday, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, Brother Stevenson's home page, our open forum. And with that being said, I um, just want to thank everyone for taking the time out to join this study and all the other studies that we have because they're very fruitful. And, and I so much enjoy these studies each day that we have them. And with that being said, may God continue to bless and keep each and every one of you. Love you all with the love of Christ. Until we meet again, it to be the Lord's will. Good night, everyone. Good night. Praying for you, Brother Lou. Praying for you. Get better, my All right. Thank you. Okay, my brother. brother. You're the family. Goodbye. Goodbye. Love y'all. Hey, Brother Stevenson. Yeah. Can I give you a quick call once we hang up?